Hi, this is Dale Scrimshaw. I told you I would show you an Excel spreadsheet that uh, I had developed for the decision making under under risk type uh, decisions that we've uh, experienced in Chapter Three. This is one I've done myself. Uh, we're going to go through it first and put in values, and and then I'll show you some of the things that I've done to to make the values appear. You'll see here, I have a kind of an orangish color area, uh, alternative or decision one, decision two, three, states of nature one through eight. Uh, then down here in the yellow, I have my results areas, uh, maxi min, mini max regret, maxi max, equally likely. I can do uh, EMV if I want to, environmental of uh, perfect, in, or uh, environmental. Expected value of perfect information and expected value with perfect information if I wish to. Uh, my decision in here, my payoff is here. My criteria of realism is over here and I have to put an alpha value in here. And then, let me scroll down and then I've got this down here. I got a place for probabilities and a place for probabilities here. So, let's just look at this little example that was in the in the text we're going to go through the same example that was in the text on Thompson's lumber here and he had uh, what, about, what was his options there a large plant a small plant or do nothing I think was his option so let's put that in a large plant a small plant and do nothing Now, that's my only three alternatives. If I had more, I could put them in, and the spreadsheet would, would calculate them. Uh, my states of nature were, there was only two. There was a favorable market, and there was an unfavorable market. Now, as I put these in here, notice they've copied down to here. Nothing's in this area yet, because I haven't put in any values. I haven't signed any uh, any expected valuations yet, but it did copy down to here. So I'm building my opportunity lost or my regret table as I put this in. Now for favorable market, uh, we had and I got to flip my text over here to find to find these numbers. Okay, for states of nature, uh, I think we had what 200,000 was a large. I don't got the wrong page here. I'm sorry, I had the wrong page up. I gotta turn a couple of pages and find what the text. Okay, two hundred thousand favorable market. A uh, hundred thousand uh, small plant and uh, nothing on the uh, zero on the do nothing option. Uh, this was supposed to be unfavorable. Let's change that. Okay, so an unfavorable market. I build a large plant. My unfavorable market is minus one hundred eighty thousand. I get that right? I think I've got too many in there. Minus 180123. There, now I got it. And uh, minus 20,000. Uh, if I did a small plant, I would lose 20,000. Do nothing uh, was still a zero option. So I have those in. And look what's happened here is I've, that I've done, as I put these values in, I have automatically calculated my maximum is a do nothing is zero payoff my mini max regret and that comes out of my table down here my mini max regret was a small plant at a hundred thousand uh, maxi max is a large plant two hundred thousand equally likely low place a small plant forty thousand a couple of things I don't have calculated yet is the criteria of realism I need an alpha value here to do that and I haven't done anything on my EMV values or my expected value of perfect information or my expected value with perfect information because I've not put any probabilities in. Well, let's put in, let's get our criteria of realism here first. The alpha value given for this problem was 0.8, I believe. I put my 0.8 in there. Uh, now I see that my criteria of realism was a large plant, 124,000. Now let's put the probabilities in there. I think he had some probabilities of uh, 0.5 and 0.5. And now I have my expected value, a uh, small plant 40,000, my uh, 
my expected value of perfect information is 60,000, and my expected value with perfect information is 100,000. So by putting the values in, by filling in the values, I've calculated all of these. The interesting thing here is how have I done that? If you look at this spreadsheet, you'll see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, G, H, G. I mean, I, oh, that's O, I, O, I, O. There's something missing between I and O. Let's move our spreadsheet over just a little bit and highlight this section. Drop my cursor somewhere in it, right click and ask it to unhide. Now, this is where all my work is done. This is where all my work is done. Notice I have a column for minimum. I'm selecting the minimum and I'm looking for the minimum in each row. I'm looking for the maximum in each row. I'm looking for the average in each row. That's many, many, many max, maxi max, and Laplace. I'm looking for the in expected valuation in each row. I'm also putting in here when I select which one is the uh, minimax, I'm going to look over here and find out which one should it go with. I do the same thing with my criteria of realism. Let's just click on a cell here. Equals if B4 is blank, leave this blank. Otherwise, find the minimum in B4 to I4, and that's this area right in here all the way across. And that's what this one does. And this takes the average. And this ex does the expected value, and notice this is a pretty hefty formula here. I think you can see this same formula in, in the text on how he gets it. If B4 is blank, then leave this blank. Otherwise, if sum dollar sign B12 through I12 equals 1, okay, B12 through I12, that's probabilities down here. Remember, I didn't have my expected valuation because they were blank, so they couldn't equal 1. Now they do. And if they do, take the sum product of this and put it there. So over in this area, I'm doing all my calculations. I scroll down a little bit. You'll see I have some more calculations down here. Now all I'm doing, I do all my calculations here. And what am I doing over here then? Over here I'm taking the maximum for the maximin. I'm taking the maximum in this column that did my calculations for uh, minimums. Here I'm taking the, uh, the minimum on my minimax regret of J27 through I34. And that is over in this area. First I get the maximums, and then I look for the minimum in it. This column, I mean this cell, is looking for the maximum of the value that was over here in K4 through K11. Here I'm looking for the maximum that was over here in this area that did my uh, average calculation. Here I'm looking for the maximum in this cell area over here. That does my EMV or my expected uh, monetary values. Uh, here, what have I done? As soon as I put this alpha value in it, that calculated a payoff. I put a, a, a value of 8 tenths in here and it calculates a payoff looking for the maximum in J17 to J24. Well, this is J17 to J24. And what does this say? It says to use this value, the two dollar signs here means never change from this cell, times the maximum in B4 to I4, B4 to I4, everything across here, plus one minus this times the minimum of everything that's across here. And that gives me this 124. The 76 is the same thing, except because I use the dollar signs here and here, I can copy that formula down. And now it's looking for the minimum. Or, or not looking for the minimum, it's looking for the same value in row 5. And now this cell only looks for the maximum in that area. So you can use sections of your 
spreadsheet to do calculations and then have your pertinent part of your spreadsheet go find those calculations and the criteria you want. That's the same thing that happened here when I put in the probabilities. As soon as I put in some probabilities, I immediately started calculating expected valuations. So that's one type of spreadsheet you could make. It's a little bit involved, but it does work. What I do next, because I want to use it again, is I always save it under a new name. I've, I've named it right now just payoff tables. But if I wanted to save this, I would save it under a new name. And that's, a, uh, that, that's one method of building a spreadsheet similar to what you see in uh, program 3.1a in the text. But uh, he's using uh, his Excel QM there. I'm using one that I've built. And it does everything. does a couple of things I think his doesn't even do. And it's a very simple thing to do. But again, I say simple, but this is a little bit involved. I'll do another spreadsheet. I'll try to get it out there uh, yet today. Today's Saturday. I'll try to send you an email link for it yet today. I may not get to it until a little later. I want to watch a little bit of the Royals game tonight, and I'm running a little bit behind. Okay, that's it for now. This is about 11 minutes. Hope it's helpful. Uh, catch me in class. See you later. Drop me an email. Bye now.